Hi, today's lesson is about stoichiometry. Before we define what stoichiometry is, let's look at this recipe for Otis Spunkemeyer's chocolate chip cookies. As you look at it, you see that we're given a list of ingredients, and when you analyze it with a little more detail, we're told that it can make three dozen cookies. And notice the word, it will yield three dozen cookies. If you haven't yet figured it out, all recipes in our kitchen are chemical reactions. The ingredients are our reactants, and what we're making are our products. So in this particular example, the ingredients are our reactants, and our cookies are the products. What if we were back in the olden days, and we were able to have bake sales? And I wanted to make six dozen cookies. That was my goal. The recipe as it's currently printed is not what I would have to follow. I would look here, realize that I wanted to have six dozen cookies. The recipe calls for making three dozen cookies. I am going to want to make twice as much. Therefore, in order to have twice as many product, I'm going to need twice as many reactants or ingredients. So I would need to have one cup of butter, and I would need to have four large eggs, and I would need to have six teaspoons of vanilla. That, my friends, is stoichiometry. <laughs> You are using the ratios in the recipe. Remember, that's our chemical reaction to alter the amount of product made or reactants needed. That is stoichiometry. Using the ratios in the recipe, generally speaking, using the ratios in the chemical reaction to alter the amount of product made or reactants needed. And we always have to keep the ratio of the reaction in its proportion. These are going to be referred to as mole ratios because when we're using chemical reactions, the coefficients of each of my species in the reaction are telling me how many moles. Oops, not mole reactions, sorry, mole ratios. And mole ratios are stoichiometry. It's how we compare two different substances in a chemical reaction. It's how we compare two different substances in a chemical reaction. So for those of you who are intimidated by the name of stoichiometry, you have done this. You can do this. Don't sweat it. Because stoichiometry is using ratios from the recipe or the reaction to alter the amount of product made or reactants needed. These will always be mole ratios. And we're making a mole ratio between two different substances in the chemical reaction. In other words, going back to the recipe, I wanted to compare how many eggs do I need to how many cookies can I make. Eggs and cookies are totally different. The only way that we can compare them is to use the relative quantities called for in the recipe. Two large eggs, 
three dozen cookies. The same idea holds true when we get to a chemical reaction. So we're given this reaction, four moles of nitrogen trihydride react with five moles of oxygen gas to produce four, four moles of nitrogen monoxide gas and six moles of liquid water. The question asks, what is the total number of moles of products formed when 1.20 moles of ammonia reacts? Well, how do I know that this is a stoichiometry problem? Well, the first thing I'm recognizing is that I am dealing with a chemical reaction, check. I know that I'm also dealing with stoichiometry when they're asking me to compare two different substances. When I look at the data that they've given to work with, 1.2 moles of ammonia. Ammonia is the common name for nitrogen trihydride. When I look at this, the quantity that I have to work with does not match the quantity called for in the recipe or chemical reaction. This would be like me going to my cupboard and saying, I want to make Otis Spunkemeyer's chocolate chip cookies today. And I open up the refrigerator and I go to grab the eggs and oh, I don't have two. I only have one left in the carton. How am I now going to need to manipulate my recipe keeping all the proportions constant in order to still make cookies, because that's what I'm craving, given the fact that I only have one egg. And the way that I know that I'm using a similar analogy is because the 1.2 moles of ammonia is less than what the recipe calls for. The recipe or the chemical reaction says I need four moles of ammonia or nitrogen trihydride in order for this reaction to work. I only have 1.2 moles. I'm still able to make the reaction work I'm just going to need to, keeping the proportions, modify the amount of other reactants that I need and which will therefore impact the amount of products I'm able to produce. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to solve it using the same form format of dimensional analysis that we've been using to solve our problems all year long. We always start with the given information. If you feel strongly about putting it into a fraction, put it over one. There's no unit in your denominator. You're multiplying this by a fraction, and that fraction wants to cancel out moles of NH3, and we want to turn it into what the problem's asking us for. When we look at the problem, it's asking us for the total number of products, total products. So that means I'm going to need to do two sets of calculations because there are two products as a result of the AND sign in my chemical reaction. The first transition that I'm going to make is into the first product, nitrogen monoxide, and then I'm going to redo the math again canceling out moles of the nitrogen trihydride or ammonia, and I'm now going to convert it into the second product, moles of water. These two fractions that I have written here, because I'm comparing moles to moles, moles to moles, that's referred to as a mole ratio. That mole ratio comes from the recipe or the reaction. My recipe or reaction says that I, for every four moles of nitrogen trihydride, it's going to make four moles of nitrogen monoxide. My recipe says for every four moles of nitrogen trihydride, it's going to make six moles of water. Those are the proportions that I need to keep constant as I manipulate the amount of reactants that I'm going to be using. So moles of nitrogen trihydride cancel out, leaving me with moles of my first product. The math on this one, because the 4 over 4 will reduce to 1 over 1, means that I will have 1.20 moles of nitrogen monoxide gas produced. And I will have 1.8 zero moles of water produced. 
Again, the moles of the nitrogen trihydride are able to cancel out. Moles of water is one of my products. That's what I'm looking for. This particular question wanted to know the total number of moles. So adding up the two answers that I have will get me 3.00 moles of total products. How do I make this harder? Well, as you know, despite the fact that our chemical reactions are giving us data as to how many moles are needed, when we're in the laboratory, we're not counting to moles because the number is too big and the things we're counting are too small. So we are able to use mass to indirectly tell us how many moles or how many atoms are present. So the question here, we have a single replacement reaction where copper is coming in and it's replacing the silver. Silver now exists as an element on the product side and copper is involved in the compound. Single replacement cationic. The question asks, how many moles of silver will be produced from 16 grams of copper, assuming that the silver nitrate is available in excess? As of today, this little bit at the end is extra information. We will elaborate on this in our next lecture when we talk about what's referred to as the limiting reagent. How do I recognize that this is a stoichiometry problem? First things first, we have a chemical reaction. As we now dig deeper, when they look at what we're looking for and the data we're given to work with, we'll notice that silver and copper are not the same. The only way that we can compare two different substances is with a mole ratio. When I look at the data, I have grams. Grams are not moles yet, however, I can convert them. So that will be my first step. I need to convert the 16 grams of copper into moles of copper. And we know that the relationship between moles and mass comes from the periodic table of the elements, the molar mass. So grams of copper is now able to cancel out. I have moles of copper, whoopsie daisies, that still need to be canceled out, and I need to turn it into moles of silver. That's where my mole ratio comes into play moles of copper to moles of silver. Where do I get the quantities? I get them from the recipe or the chemical reaction. According to the reaction, for every one mole of copper that reacts, two moles of silver will be produced. Looking at my units, moles of copper cancel out. Moles of silver is what's left, and that's what the question's asking me to solve for. So I now proceed with the math. 16 times 1 times 2 divided by the molar mass, which is 63.45. That gets me to 5.50433421 on the calculator. Thinking back to significant figures, we do not use the numbers 2 and 1 because those are counted, those are infinite. We got them right from here. The molar mass has four. The data we've been given to work with has three. Our answer has to be reported to the three significant figures. So we have just over half a mole of silver metal produced in this chemical reaction. When you're looking at all of this math, this part here, the two moles of silver to the two, one mole of copper, that is your stoichiometry. That is your mole ratio. This is the only way that we are able to compare two different substances. The math we did first is ma old math. We've done that already. 
The new part is this mole ratio. That's what stoichiometry is. The final way that we can make this difficult is to just give you everything in words here. 6.50 grams of aluminum reacts with an excess of oxygen. How many grams of aluminum oxide are formed? Notice in this problem, we haven't given you the chemical reaction, and that needs to be your starting point. We know that aluminum is going to react with oxygen. Two elements implies that it's going to be a synthesis reaction, and they will make aluminum oxide. Remember from our predicting products lecture that when we have a metal and a nonmetal forming an ionic compound, it will be the solid state of matter. Double checking how to balance. Ah, I'm going to need a two in front of here, a three in front of the oxygen, and a four in front of the aluminum. Now that I have my balanced chemical equation, I can go about solving the problem. When I look at the data, the 6.5 grams of aluminum, and I'm asking how many grams of aluminum oxide, aluminum and aluminum oxide are two totally different things. The only way I'm able to compare them is with mole ratios. The data that I'm given is not moles, it's given in grams. So I have to convert those grams into moles. And I, that's my old math. Grams divided by molar mass gets you to moles. Now I'm at my new stuff. I'm going to cancel out the moles of aluminum and change them into the moles of aluminum oxide using a mole ratio. When this fraction has moles over moles, that's called a mole ratio. The quantities come from the coefficients in the balanced equation. Moles of aluminum will now cancel out. I'm left with moles of aluminum oxide, double checking. It wants how many grams? So I can't say equals. I'm not done just yet. I'm going to need another fraction. That fraction is going to be the molar mass. Aluminum. 26.98, and we need to have two of them. That gets me 53.96 grams. And oxygen has a mass of 16. This compound has three of them. That's 48. So putting those two together, 101.96 grams per mole is its molar mass. This allows moles of aluminum oxide to cancel out. And I'm able to now do the arithmetic because what's not canceling out is grams of aluminum oxide and that's what the problem's asking for. The calculator gives me 1,000. My unit will be grams. Double checking significant figures. My answer can only have two of them. So if 6.5 grams of aluminum reacts with an excess of oxygen, 12 grams of aluminum oxide will be formed.
thank you for watching. I look forward to answering your questions and doing more practice problems with you in class.